Welcome to the Probe a Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many sessions being offered, um, so please do sign up for additional sessions. The presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week on the same website where you registered. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters. And first up is Oglethorpe University. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Juliana Cardoza. I am an admission counselor at Oglethorpe University. We are located in Atlanta, Georgia, and a lot of people say that we look like Hogwarts. Um, can you guys see my screen okay? Well, we're still not seeing your screen. Oh, that is strange. I'm so sorry about that. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so there we go. Um, a lot of people say that we look like Hogwarts. Like I said, we're located in Atlanta. Um, we have about 1500 students. So we are a pretty small school. We're a private liberal arts school um, that focuses on connected living and hands on learning. So because we are a small school, we definitely you definitely get to connect with your professors. Uh, they know your name. Um, it's a very walkable campus. Um, and so it is a small campus in the big city of Atlanta, which means that there is a lot of opportunity for you if you're looking for internships or jobs after graduation or while you are at Oglethorpe. Um, we have over 60 academic programs, so just another fancy way of saying majors. So um, our most popular majors are biology, psychology, and theater, which is a wide range. Um, but we also offer a dual degree engineering program where you can get both your physics degree and engineering degree in five years. Um, we just opened our Cousin Center for Science and Innovation. Um, so you can take all of your biology classes there and your chemistry classes in this gorgeous new building. And we have the Hammock School of Business um, and individually planned majors as well if we don't have a major or if we don't have a major that you're interested in. Um, as far as campus housing goes, it's definitely an involved campus. Most students do live on campus. We have over 60 clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. You can also be a part of Greek life if you're interested in that. Um, Greek life at Oglethorpe is very focused on philanthropic work. Um, we also have 16 Division III teams. So if you're interested in playing a sport at Oglethorpe, you can reach out to us and try out for the team if that's something you're interested in, or you might be getting recruited by Oglethorpe as well. Um, we have eight on-campus residence halls. Like I said, most people live on campus. Um, we do have a few commuters, but it is a very involved campus, whether you live on or off campus. Oglethorpe students are the presidents of five different clubs and are also in a sorority and a fraternity. So it's definitely a really great resume building school. Um, and then we also have proximity to MARTA, which is our public transportation system. So if you don't have a car, um, it doesn't matter. You can get anywhere you need because we're right next to that public transportation. Um, or if you want to get into the city and avoid traffic, you can just hop on the MARTA. Um, Oglethorpe is a very diverse school. We have um, over 51% of our students identify as students of color. Um, it is a very inclusive community and a lot of students say that Atlanta is like home to them. Um, so if you're from out of state or if you're from Georgia, it's definitely a second, a place that you can call your second home. Um, and a lot of students really feel like Oglethorpe has a diverse student population and the average Oglethorpe student describes himself as quirky. So if you feel like you're quirky, then you probably can find your home at Oglethorpe. As far as value goes, we do offer aid and when you apply, you're automatically considered for all of our, um, any of our merit-based scholarships and all of our um, aid at Oglethorpe. So that can range anywhere between $18,000 and $23,000. And then we, you, do, you can qualify for need-based aid as well. Um, and then we do offer state-based aid. So if you are in Georgia, we do have the HOPE match as well as Zell Miller. Um, and then we do offer out-of-state aid equivalencies. And then obviously there's federal aid, which is based on the FAFSA. Um, our biggest scholarship is the Flagship 50 scholarship. It basically means that we will match the price of Oglethorpe 
uh, the price of tuition at Oglethorpe for the flagship state tuition in your state. So if you are in Georgia, that is the University of Georgia. If you're in Florida, University of Florida, South Carolina, USC, and so on. Um, so you will not pay more for Oglethorpe than the price um, of those schools. To apply, you just need three things. You need your application, your transcripts, and your personal statements. Uh, we are test optional, and these are all of our optional um, criteria as well. So definitely submit it if you would like, but it is not required. And this is my contact information. So if you are interested in learning more about Oglethorpe, definitely reach out. Thank you so much. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, I just want to check in and remind our attendees to um, please do put your uh, questions for any of our presenters in the Q&A um, and, and they will answer them. Uh, and I just want to check uh, with Amanda from Bernau if she's ready. I know she's experiencing some difficult technical difficulties. Um, so if not, we'll, we'll skip her and move on. Amanda, are you ready or shall we skip you? Uh, just skip me. My computer is still having issues. <laughs> Okay. All right. So we're going to move on to Troy University. Good evening, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Birdie Norris, and I am the recruiter for Troy University covering this area now. Um, I am going to share my screen now. So let me just one second. All right. Um, so for those of you who may not be familiar with Troy University, we are located in um, Troy, Alabama, which is in um, the southeast area of Alabama. Some of our fast facts we have about our campus, we have around 7,500 students on campus. We have over 110 different academic majors and minor options as well as 13 different residence halls. We have over 200 student organizations and we are a D1 um, athletics um, group. So we are a part of the Sunbelt Conference. Here you can, can see where we are located here in um, this far right corner of Alabama. We do have some other campuses in the state of Alabama um, along with our Montgomery campus, our Phoenix City campus and our Dothan campus. For our admissions requirements, we um, are currently accepting students without um, ACT or SAT scores. We have waived those for this year. And you can see here we have some different options. Um, most oftentimes, each student will have an admissions counselor who will work with them and talk them through the different options that they have based off of their um, admissions requirements. In order to start your journey at Troy, you must apply for admissions online um, at enroll.troy.edu. You'll pay the $30 application fee. Then you'll send in um, your official transcripts to Troy. And um, if you would like to, you can send in your test scores. Then after that, you will check your email address that you applied um, with. And then that will be the first place that you hear about your admissions decision. After that, you'll create your Troy accounts by following the steps listed in your Welcome to the Trojan Family email. Here are some overall costs and fees that we do have. So um, for our in-state students, we do um, our cost is $325 per credit. And then for our out-of-state students, um, it is $650 per credit hour. So we do have some options for our out-of-state students in order to cut down on that cost. Um, and then um, as you can see, we have a range of housing and meal plans available to our students, um, along with some other general university fees that you can see down below. Now that we've kind of talked about some of our costs, um, let's talk a little bit about some of our scholarship options that we have for our students. So um, we did have a priority deadline of March 1st for our scholarships, but if you are a senior, we are um, still awarding some scholarships at this point. So you would just need to reach out to me and I would be able to assist you in moving forward. Starting with our Trojan Leadership Award, we start that at a 20 to a 25 on the ACT or a 1030 to a 1220 on the SAT. This is two to four thousand dollars annually. All of these awards, we are still requiring the ACT or the SAT. As you can see, we have our Chancellor's Award moving up, which ranges from six to ten thousand dollars annually. 
Then moving forward, we have our Scholars Award, um, which is full tuition and traditional housing. And then on, um, on top of that, we have our Scholars Plus Award, um, which is full tuition, full housing, and a meal plan. So lots of great awards that we still have our students. Um, because of this year, we have been very flexible with our deadlines. So um, if you are interested in Troy and you have some of these four ranges for the ACT or the SAT, I would love to talk with you about um, your options here at Troy. We do have some other options. If any of you have alumni in your family, we have a couple of different alumni scholarships um, and we do have um, some other scholarships here for our students incoming. Going back to our out of state costs. So um, being an out of state institution, we know that that is a, um, a big push for you guys to come from Georgia. So um, we do have some states that automatic or some counties in your state that automatically qualify for in state tuition. So as you can see here, um, we have a list here for our Georgia um, counties. But if you don't live in that county and don't automatically qualify for that, um, then we do have a scholarship here called the Trojan Opportunity Expanded Award. Um, this requires at least a 20 on the ACT um, or the um, appropriate SAT score and at least a 3.0 GPA. Um, this will award you the out of state portion of tuition. So um, really, it would really cut down on your overall costs that you um, would see coming from out of state. Some of our important deadlines that we have coming up and that we um, will keep for the um, following year. So housing will open um, on October 1st. Um, Merit-based scholarships are um, available for students to apply for. Um, financial aid is open as well. Um, and then we do have some other foundation scholarships that are not based off of merit that students can apply for. Um, these are very specific to um, your major that you may be interested in, um, what county you're coming from, and just very, um, very different things from across the board um, that you could qualify for. In order to apply for all of these things, you must first be admitted to Troy in order to um, talk about scholarships, housing, financial aid, and um, in order to move forward in that process. If you're interested, you can go ahead and follow us on Facebook or Instagram. We keep a lot of updates there, um, especially on deadlines coming up or new and exciting things that are happening on campus. So I encourage you guys to all go and follow us at Troy U Admissions. And then if you would like to, you can schedule a meeting here with me um, on the QR code. You'll just click um, Birdie Howell North. And um, as you can see, my contact information is at the bottom there. If you would like to email me or give me a call, um, I'll be more than happy to assist um, in the future and um, hopefully see you at Troy one day. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, and our next presentation will come from Louisiana State University. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Alejandro Ramirez, and I'm the Regional Admissions Counselor for the state of Georgia, and I'm locally based here in Atlanta. I've got a limited amount of time to speak with you this evening, uh, but if you have additional questions, please feel free to contact me. You can also request more information by scanning the QR code at the top of the slide, um, and I'll just jump right into it. Uh, so LSU is located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we are considered a large public university with about 25,000 undergraduate students. As a flagship university, we're considered in the elite 1% of universities in the nation. But what really sets our academic reputation as an elite 1% institution is that LSU is one of only 27 institutions to hold the land, sea, and space grant research status. LSU is also one of only eight universities in the nation to have a medical school, dental school, veterinary school, law school, and an elite MBA program. We've also been ranked number one in the SEC for return on investment. We're most known for our health science programs like biological sciences, pre-med, kinesiology, pre-athletic training and pre-physical th uh, therapy, for our engineering programs like mechanical engineering and petroleum engineering, for our business programs like accounting, finance, and entrepreneurship, and our pre-law program to go along with our law school. While those are what we're most known for, we have many more amazing programs here at LSU, and you can find them at lsu.edu backslash majors. We do require freshmen to live on campus. However, we also guarantee freshman housing, so there's no need to rush your decision. 
and campus life is thriving with over 450 student clubs and organizations to get involved in, like Greek life, pre-professional organizations, and club sports. We've got them all covered, and with so many, we have an event going on every week. And a quick fun fact, we have a live tiger on campus. His name is Mike, and our students love to go visit Mike the Tiger at his habitat by our football stadium. You can find our application on the Common App, and we review applications holistically. If you're not aware, holistically means that we take everything into account. So whatever you want to send to us, we want to see. Our deadlines are December 15th for priority and February 1st for regular. December 15th is also our priority deadline for scholarship consideration and for the Honors College. Neither require an additional application. Scholarships are automatically reviewed for after admission. And for honors, you only need to check a box on our general application and we know to review you for it. We do require your high school transcript and at least one letter of recommendation from an academic source to complete your application. Feel free to send us additional letters of recommendation, an application essay, and your extracurriculars list for review, which we do highly recommend due to our holistic review process. We're currently test optional for the incoming class of 2025, but the decision to keep the option going forward is still being discussed. For a good estimate on your chance for admission, you can check out our middle 50% and mid student profile, which is a 23 to 28 ACT, an 1120 to 1320 SAT, and a 3.4 to 4.0 weighted GPA. So if you're taking those honors, APs, IBs, dual enrollment classes that give you a boosted grade, that's the GPA we review. Students who fall within these ranges have a really good chance for being admission, uh, for admission because historically this caliber student has been admitted. And we realize that the effects of COVID-19 are still affecting many of our students' ability to take the ACT and SAT or other aspects of your high school career. So I'm here to tell you to focus on what you can control rather than stressing over what you can't. We understand that these years have been unlike any others and we are here to work with you in navigating the admissions process. But also due to our holistic review process, we have a few other items that we look at when we're reading an application, such as community involvement, talents and interests, and even your own voice. And these additional materials can help further enhance your application and help me as your admissions counselor have a greater understanding of who you are. And as mentioned, scholarships are automatically reviewed for after being admitted, and there's no separate application for them. Out-of-state merit scholarships range from about 40,000 to 200,000 over the course of four years, and they are scaled up to help bring down the out-of-state tuition cost, which currently is about 28,600, and room and board is about 12,200 for the year. And again, this is before scholarship and financial aid, which over 95% of all of our students receive some type of scholarship or financial aid. And this is the end of my time, uh, but I will be available to answer questions in the chat uh, throughout the rest of the event. Um, thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, my contact information, again, is at the top of the slide, and you can scan the QR code uh, to sign up for more information about LSU. Great, thank you so much, LSU. And our next presentation is from Georgia College. Excellent, thanks, Matt. Um, Y'all bear with me while I get this screen share going. All righty. Okay, everyone. So my name is Rachel Horn, and I'm an admissions counselor with Georgia College, located in the historic lakeside city of Milledgeville. We are the state's designated public liberal arts university. And a lot of you are probably thinking, okay, cool, 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 but what on earth is liberal arts? I'll start with what we're not. We are not politically affiliated in any which way, and we are not an art school, though we do have a phenomenal arts program. But we're also home to the number one nursing program in the university system, a business program that is accredited on the highest national level, one of the best teaching programs in the region and many other programs like political science, psychology, music therapy, chemistry, criminal justice, exercise science, theater, communications, I could go on and on. Liberal arts is not a box that defines what majors we have. It's about how your time here will be shaped both inside and outside the classroom. We're focused on building essential skills like effective communication, 
critical and analytical thinking, collaboration, leadership, and creative problem solving. This style of education is only found in private schools here in Georgia, except at Georgia College. So you're getting the value of a private school education at a public school price with the added bonus of using your Hope or Zell Miller scholarship. One way we accomplish this is with our GC Journeys program. Through this program, you'll have the opportunity to complete at least five of these transformative experiences before you graduate, while the average college student in the US does less than three. These top three are automatically built into your time with us, regardless of your major. Then you'll have the opportunity to pick from any of these below to achieve at least two more. And depending on your major, some of these might already be built in for you. All of these experiences are going to challenge the way that you think and show you just how much you're capable of. Being a medium-sized school, we have about 6,000 undergraduate students here on campus, which allows for 95% of our classes to be less than 50 students. This means no intimidating lecture halls where you, where you just get swallowed up amongst like 300 other students. Our classes are focused on engagement and discussion and creating an environment for you where you feel comfortable to ask questions, to voice your opinion, and work cohesively with your peers and your professors. Now, don't worry, Bobcats are all work and no play. We have over 170 student organizations, over 90 intramural sport leagues, 27 fraternities and sororities, an awesome campus activities board, a cultural center dedicated to promoting our mission of diversity and inclusion, and a designated center on campus to help connect you to volunteering opportunities all throughout the area. And with all of our freshmen living on campus, you'll be walking distance or just a couple minutes drive away from all of these things. So we promise you will never be bored. If this sounds like a place you wanna be a part of, let's talk about the application. We're on Common App and Georgia Futures. Our application includes two essays that we provide the prompts for, and yes, we really do read them. We also need your high school to send us an official transcript. We're currently test optional for fall and spring of 2021, but you're welcome to send in your scores if you feel like they help paint a more complete picture of your application. For fall 22, um, we don't know if we will be test optional just yet. That's a decision that will be made by the University System of Georgia since we're a public institution, but that announcement hopefully will be coming soon in the next couple of months. Additionally, we strongly recommend sending in a resume of activities and letters of recommendation from teachers or counselors. Just like the essays and every part of your application, we really do look at these, and that's because we review holistically. This means that we look at your application in its entirety, not just your GPA, though that is an important piece. We consider the rigor that you've taken. We look for academic trends on your transcript. And when we read your essays, your resume, and your letters of recommendation, we're looking for what your application alone can't tell us. What do you devote your time to outside of academics? What contributions have you made to your community or to your school? What leadership skills, talents, or ambitions do you possess? We also look for demonstrated interests, which is communicating with your admissions counselor, coming for a campus tour, or tuning in for a virtual info session like this, or for one of our one of ours that we host every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. Now I mentioned that GPA, while not the only factor, is still an important one. This scale shows you what our admitted freshmen from last year look like academically. Our average unweighted core GPA was a 3.6, with 50% of our students falling between a 3.34 and a 3.87. But no matter where you fall on this scale, since we are the third most selective public school in the state and we follow that holistic review process, it's really important that you make your application as competitive as possible. We are now in our rolling admission cycle, which has a final deadline of April 1st. That's also the deadline to apply to our honors college, which is a separate application from our admissions one. Um, our early action is non-binding, which usually comes around October 15th each year as well. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Here's my contact info. We'll be happy to answer your questions in the chat and share some helpful links with you. Thank you, Rachel. 
Uh, and our final presentation for this session is from Brunel University. Thank you, and bear with me. I am hoping and crossing all of my fingers that this does not shut down on me again. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start the presentation. I do have on a backup uh, my phone. So if it does shut off on me, I will use my phone instead. So my name is Amanda Marshall. I am from Brunel University, which is located in Gainesville, Georgia. This is our historical campus. We do have a few other campuses around Georgia as well, but uh, historically we were a women's college. We do still have a women's college. However, we do have an undergraduate college with co-ed. So we do have men on campus as well. We still have our women's college, which allows women to be in classes that are empowering and lead them to success in the college and outside of college to be a leader in the world and any organization. So at a glance, we have uh, degree levels of associate, bachelor, master's and doctorate. Uh, if you want to continue your education, we do highly encourage you to do that. We lead you to success in that area and uh, we mentor you in that as well. So. Our student to teacher ratio, it says here 11 students to one professor. However, there are some classes that are nine students to one professor as well. Our enrollment is 3,500 students. So it is a smaller university. You're not just the number on campus. Our professors really want to mentor you. They notice you and you are more of a family in your classrooms. So you're when you change classes, you'll be able to know people, you won't have a stranger. So it's a small university and it's a private university, but you bet get better opportunities. Our application requirements are, if you have a 2.5 core class GPA, which means we only look at those in your literature, your um, science, your history, your math, we look at those, we add those up and we require you have at least a 2.5 GPA in those classes. All we need for your um, application is your official transcript and we are SAT or SAT, ACT required, excuse me, but it is required if you wanna become a Brunel athlete. If you are interested in being a Brunel athlete, please let me know, I'd be happy to connect you. Uh, we also have no application fees. So if you wanna go ahead and even apply tonight, it won't take you that long. It'll take you about 15 minutes. Again, all we need is your official transcript. Um, and that's about it for your <laughs> application requirements there. So you can uh, click on the link below or copy it down and uh, go to it later. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to help you. We have a lot of scholarship opportunities. So our merit scholarship is based on your GPA and uh, not your SAT or ACT. So we, uh, once we uh, process your application, we'll be able to see what you would apply for for those scholarships. We go from about 6,000 to 15,000 a year, but because we're a private institution, that goes more towards your uh, tuition and takes a lot off. We also have talent scholarships. So if you wanna be in a sport, we also have music, theater, dance, and art and design. For the art and design, you would submit a portfolio and then you would get up to $5,000 in scholarships for that. Our sports, you can get up to $12,000 in scholarships. And then of course, when you audition for music, theater or dance, you would get a scholarship for that as well. We also uh, have state grants. We have the Hope Scholarship. We have the Zell Miller Scholarship as well. And then if you know anybody in your family who went to Brunel University, you are likely to get a legacy scholarship. And I encourage you fill out your FAFSA. That does have a lot of financial aid help and will help you with a lot of scholarships and any other grants and aids that we can help you with. Around campus, we do have on-campus tours as well as virtual. So I encourage you to go to our bernal.edu slash admissions slash visit, and you can either attend on campus or in virtual or both. I encourage you to do that. It is a beautiful campus. This was built in the late 1800s. And so we have a lot of the original buildings and art and a lot of historical things that I'm sure you would really enjoy. We have a lot of majors to offer. A lot of students who come here come for our nursing program. We are in the top 10 in Georgia. We also have a lot of students who come here later for their um, continuing BSN, their nurse practitioner, a lot of things of that area. We also have a lot of people who come for education, which is very important. I know we do appreciate a lot of the educators um, now more than ever because of what's going on. Uh, we also are a liberal arts college, but we do have a lot of focus in other areas, like I mentioned, in business and education. 
And so I encourage you to check it out. There's a lot to look into. You can see what classes are offered under each program and uh, see what scholarships might be offered for that as well. Our majors continued. We do have computer science for those who are interested and we have any psychology, uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy. It's a wonderful program. We also have a separate uh, tour for our nursing and uh, that area over there. As I mentioned before, we do have sports, but it is only offered to women who are in the women's college. We have 15 sports offered and you can get up to $15,000 or a $12,000, excuse me, scholarship. So if you're interested in being um, recruited, please let me know and I'd be able to help you get into that. With our next steps, you are encouraged by all of us here to go ahead and look on our website to tour. Online tour is an event. We have a financial event going on uh, tonight or tomorrow night, I believe. And you can RSVP to that and get more information about that. I encourage you to fill out your FAFSA and you can get a lot of financial aid for that. And under admissions, again, our application is only 15 minutes long. You can even apply from your, uh, your phone and it's a no application fee whatsoever. And all we need is your official transcripts. So if you need any assistance, please contact me or the admissions office and we'd be happy to help you. And thank you so much for having me tonight. I'm sorry if it seems I have an echo in the background, so it's kind of distracting me, but um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, so that does conclude our uh, presentations for this session. Um, please do put any questions in the Q&A for any and all of our uh, presenters. And I would ask that all of our presenters uh, come back on camera and we have um, a couple questions for you uh, to start. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go in the same order that you presented. So I'll throw it back to Oglethorpe University. Yeah, great question. So my biggest advice is definitely ask for help. If you're a first generation college student, um, you're definitely not alone. And so reaching out to the colleges that you're interested in also tells if how responsive they are will also tell you, you know, if maybe that's a good fit for you. Um, also reaching out to your high school counselor or a mentor someone that can help you as you're looking for a college um, definitely because if you are new to it or even if you're not it is a whole new world and you never know unless you ask for help yeah so i would echo the same um just reaching out every college especially in this process is going to be different with how they do things so um getting as much information as you can is going to be super helpful. Um, I would go and um, take a tour too. I think that is um, super beneficial if you can go in person right now um, and um, that's, you know, safe for your family and um, the campuses you're looking at are offering that. I would definitely say go in person um, or do um, a virtual tour of the campus, but um, I think that is um, going to really help you see yourself you know, being there and being successful there. Um, go to the, every college that you're interested in. Don't just go to, to one or two, go to as many as you can um, that you're applying to so you can really get a feel for that campus life. Uh, so my advice would be um, to get in contact with your admissions counselors from all the colleges uh, that you're looking at. Um, we're here to help you out. Um, I'm always more than happy when I receive emails and you know about questions about LSU. Um, so my advice would be to make sure to reach out to your count, uh, admissions counselors. Alejandro, I definitely agree with that. <laughs> and um, I always tell my students, utilize me, like maximize, okay? Maximize using me. But also guys, um, you know, the easiest way to kind of narrow down your search is finding the right academic fit, social fit, and financial fit. There is no need to apply to 50 colleges. 
no need. Um, I really don't even encourage students to apply to more than like 12. That's absolute max. Um, eight to 10 is really ideal. Um, so when you're looking at academic fit, you know, is this something where your academic profile, GPA and test scores is likely to get in? Um, maybe it's a reach school. Maybe it's, you know, you're not really sure, like it's kind of a 50-50 chance. Whatever it may be, make sure it's a good academic fit. Um, when you're looking at financial fit, is this a school that, you know, you and your support system can afford? Um, do they have scholarship opportunities for you? Um, maybe you're really looking to capitalize on that Zell Miller scholarship. So is it a public institution? If it's a private institution and they, um, you know, do a type of thing with Zell Miller, consider the costs that are still going to be left over. Um, and then when it comes to social, you know, make sure that it's in a setting that you like because that's definitely going to impact your lifestyle. You know, maybe you want a walkable campus. Maybe you want a more urban campus. Maybe you want to be somewhere kind of in between. Um, and of course, make sure that they have the organizations and the campus resources that you want as part of your social life as well. Sorry, my computer is still having issues here, but uh, I, I don't know if I have anything to add. Everybody has such great advice, but I would just say, you know, make sure to see which campus, which school you feel like you'd be the best fit in. If you feel like you would be a number lost in a crowd and just going to campus and, and you wouldn't want that, then that's something to consider. If you want something, if you don't want something that's small where people would see you, then that's something to consider as well as you're looking for a college and where you just feel like you would be able to grow both in your um, academic success and not um, feel lost and get in that um, as well as what I would suggest. Awesome, thank you so much. So our next question, is uh, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Yeah, so at Oglethorpe, it is definitely a traditional college experience um, as far as like most people are there for four years. Um, but I would say our fa my favorite event is probably Quad Fest, and I'm sure most students would say the same. It's like right before finals, and we'll usually have like a band come out, um, and there's like a ton of games and food trucks and like all this fun stuff to like help you relax right before finals. Um, but there's definitely a lot going on on campus on the weekends, and also because we're in Atlanta, there's a lot going on in Atlanta. So, yeah. So um, we always have, you know, fun events for homecoming and um, welcome week and just, you know, different things that happen um, throughout the year. But um, definitely a tradition on our campus in our dining hall is Fried Chicken Wednesday. And that will have people wrapped around um, the sidewalk for um, fried chicken on Wednesdays. If you come on tour, um, you'll hear our students talk about it constantly. So they serve, you know, macaroni and cheese and all, all of the good sides that you want with that fried chicken. Um, so definitely that's my favorite for sure. So there's a lot of awesome stuff that goes on on our campus, but you, you really can't beat uh, the football games in Death Valley, uh, especially on like Saturday nights and everything like that with the lights on. Uh, that's just, it's like a whole different realm, honestly. So I, I'd have to go with that. So mine isn't just a Georgia College tradition. It's kind of evolved into one over time, but it's really a Milledgeville tradition, which is where we're located. And it's called the Deep Roots Festival. Coolest thing I've ever been to. I absolutely love it. So what happens, it actually brings like tens of thousands of visitors to our adorable little town every year. Um, there's tons of live music. They have a chili cook-off, a barbecue cook-off and all of downtown is closed off. So everyone's walking around, all the vendors are out, you know, the bands are playing. It's just so cool. It's an awesome time to meet new people and meet people, you know, not just within the Georgia College community, but also the Milledgeville community. Um, and it's just kind of always been something that everyone looks forward to in the fall here at GC. Um, and now going forward, it's gonna be a two day event. So all weekend long and we're super, super excited. 
I'm still sort of new to Brunel and COVID of course happened right after I joined <laughs> um, Brunel University's team. So, but the one thing that I was able to attend and that I find is my favorite is the uh, winter weekend. So students get to stay over at winter weekend, see what the school is like, uh, potential students. If you're a senior, you're able to stay and um, you get to stay up all night with those who are in Greek housing, uh, have a pizza party. Uh, you get to uh, see a talent show that students at Brunel campus get to put on anybody on campus gets to go and it's really cool you see a lot of support from students even if they don't know the person who was performing you feel a lot of support and um, like your family there so it was a cool um, after party afterwards as well so it was a cool experience for me as a new employee there and I'm hoping everything gets back to normal soon so I can experience more traditions and events <laughs> excellent thank you all so much um, so that brings us to the end of this session. Um, so I want to say thank you for joining us to our attendees and to our presenters for uh, all the information you provided. Um, please do sign up for more sessions for this college fair. Um, recordings will be available uh, at the website on the screen in about a week, strivescan.com slash probe. Um, there is a brief four question survey that will appear when um, you close the Zoom window and we, we really do appreciate your feedback. So thank you all for joining us tonight and uh, enjoy the rest of your evenings.